good morning, you beautiful people. Yeah, it is morning, and this is simply because this whole week I have been trying to record, do voiceovers, yada, 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 and they're stripping the street right in front of our apartment. So there's been a lot of banging going on, and when that wasn't going on, our landlord was doing God knows what. So then again, I can't complain. I'm ripping 808s all the time so it's kind of a catch as catch can you know what but that's why we're up early this morning i have my helena bonham starter kit going on and this is the intro so better late than ever but first of all yeah we get a new character this week monsieur al ghoul and this was given to me by our dear friend laura jane um Victorian hair worker, craftsman of all types of very beautiful objects. Her Etsy shop is called Staghorn House. I will link that and the Staghorn House Instagram account down below. But she gave us Al Ghul and he's been a welcome addition to the Celtic, a foil to many plots. And the Conager, the ladies' man, he rivals the otter as far as that goes. <laughs> I would also like to thank uh, my friends who got together and gave me a very wonderful gift, which was the schminky, granulating watercolors that I've been lusting after forever. So you will see those used within this week's episode. Used them a lot, actually, just to test them out. Really tried to push them hard, so thanks to Kathleen, Vivian, David, um... Kevin, Katie, and Faith, because uh, we all used to play D&D together, and actually I had to stop DMing because I was going to put all my efforts into doing this strange little comic strip about my stuffed animals who like to boof weed and other crazy stuff like that, so there you go. And the soundtrack this week, um, I talked about Ilion. Radik and how impressed I was by her work. Well, her early work involved using feedback. And normally when we think of feedback, we think of it as being in a club and the loud shrieking noise. But she discovered that, you know, very patiently, if you hold your microphones and certain, you could produce beautiful tones, but it takes a lot of patience and a lot of discipline. So inspired by her, I decided to try that out. So once again, kind of going backwards in the techniques that I'm using, but then running them through the morphogene, all that other things. One of these days I should do a video that actually shows how I do that. So that'll be good. And the other great thing that happened this week was my wife Kathleen surprised me with an anniversary present of a 12-gauge microphone, which that's exactly what it is. Their microphone's built into used shotgun shell casings and right now i'm using the green one i'll do a full review on on this later but i am impressed as hell with this microphone and they're made in vermont that's where both kathleen and i used to live when we were growing up so that's a great i don't know supporting local businesses from the past is there a nostalgia trip going on there maybe but anyways i think i've droned on long enough I hope you really like Al Ghul. Of course you'll like Al Ghul. Al Ghul is so lovable. Look at that hair. <sighs> Great hair for a bat. And I wasn't going to put the teeth on him, but I saw a video of little tiny bats this week, and one of them kept on baring his teeth, and that was like its favorite thing was to show its teeth. So Al Ghul, he kept his teeth. Anyways, love y'all. I'll give you a little bit of Sybil and Hayward action, and then we're into it. Have a beautiful week. Love y'all. Bye. What are your thoughts on Al Ghul? See, Hayward loves Al Ghul. Once again, starting off with the masking fluid. The good thing is I'm getting more used to how to draw these, so they're a little bit, I may switch over. I really like uh, the Ticonderoga pencils. Uh, I've been using a harder lead, so the pencil marks don't show through as much, but I may change that just so I don't know. So you can see the sketching stage. Pretty much building it up. 
But once again, using the Windsor and Newton masking fluid. Why? Because, oh my god, it's so good to use. I just like it. I'm sure I'll keep the piggy around, but yeah. For now, it's Windsor and Newton. And I use a lot of masking fluid, I think, because I, I like wet on wet so much. And especially this week when I'm trying out these schminky, super granulating colors, I really wanted to hit it hard. I'm using Arches hard press paper once again. Totally in love with that. And the good thing is, if you buy it in the 8.5 by 11, or maybe it's 9 by 12 that they sell it in, you'll figure it out. It's actually affordable. The larger sizes, forget about it. Yeah, those are expensive, but you stick with 9 by 12 and look at the end like I cut those in half for each one of these panels so and the reason I'm working so large is so it shows up on Instagram Twitter yada 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 you know because they're already shrunk down so I figured I might as well expand the size of them a little bit make them more readable and that's been the interesting thing is I've said it before how do you simplify the lines to the bare minimum to kind of keep the character convey emotion go through that's what I think makes cartooning so interesting and now we're getting wet and like I said before I love speeding up the footage because then you can just see it drip right down the page uh what I like recording when I Steve Cronin I've talked about him before but you should definitely check out his YouTube channel he does a lot of this wet on wet work he's an amazing landscape watercolorist and so I'll do his tutorials and sometimes I'll tape those just so you can see like the colors falling down the page because you don't see it as you're doing it but if you speed it up you see them just dropping down and as I went along on the, I should cut out saying and all the time as I went along on this I tried hitting it harder and harder just you want to I always want to push things to see how far you can take them before they fall apart. And uh, once again, and damn it. <laughs> I probably shouldn't be putting all my trials and mistakes on display, but otherwise, you're just gonna get too precious about your stuff. Just DIY it, put it out there. Your mistakes are what makes you interesting. Nobody cares about perfection. This is what social media gets wrong. Everybody's trying to present their best selves. We all know it's a lie. Show your mistakes. Your mistakes are what make you interesting. Nobody wants to hear about perfection. Now, the time you really screwed the pooch? Yeah, and how you got out of that? That's interesting. I like how Al Ghul, you know, where the, uh, paint seep through the masking fluid because I'm an idiot. It kind of makes him look like Cthulhu before I colored him in. Al Ghul's like, you should do the Gematria on that. You'll find out I am Cthulhu. <laughs> Would not surprise me at all. It's always funny because I think the profile to profile view that's used so commonly in comics, I always feel as if that's false. And there should be a rotation of the head, at least to a certain degree. But then I'll be watching movies and you get full profile profile shots, characters talk to each other. So once again, it turns out I am the idiot and no big surprise there. <laughs> And I love how warm this color is. Because if you're going to use color, might as well go for it. Find the really good ones. The hard thing that always screws up with watercolors is it's always much darker than you think it's going to try it than it is when it dries and you get used to that after a while but it's an interesting process to watch for the sake of speed I have each of them taped to a panel so as I have one color loaded I can just go through and do all four panels that that occurs but maybe one of these times I'll do a panel 
all at once and then just leave the camera on it as it dries speed it up and then we can actually watch that process as they lighten during the drying And when it comes to Chico, you can, uh, I screwed up, I think, on this one. You'll see it during the inking process where I outline. And I was like, maybe I should fix that. And I was like, nah, forget about it. Show your mistakes. Quit being precious about everything. Just Here it is. Here is how I screwed up. Contrary to what I said before, though, I didn't fix it, so... There's only the part of the story that is how I screwed up. Not how I fixed it, because I didn't fix it. And once again, using the cheap Chinese calligraphy brush. The thing I have learned about using those Chinese calligraphy brushes, you don't need to re-wet them. They will probably hold water until the next flood comes. It's a hard habit to break because you're just like, let me, let me dip that in there and get it. Nope, it is a mop. And I said it a few weeks ago, but I really do need to look into the Japanese nibs that will come out to about the same relative size as a speedball because I hate to say it, but speedball's quality control, not the greatest. I think anyone that uses dip pens will tend to agree with that. And I'm really looking forward to, there's a, another character that will be introduced in the next couple of weeks to months. I think I want to bring her in around Halloween. And that's going to be a completely different style of lettering for her. And I'm really looking forward to that. The other thing that I love is the reason I haven't gone with my normal sketching pencils and instead used a hard lead and when I sketch is when I watercolor over the sketches you're first of all you have the masking fluid that's being removed and then you're watercoloring over it you lose the lines so you have no guidance as to where the pieces are. And I like that. I kind of like using the watercolor and the accidental nature of it to kind of force me into territory that I probably wouldn't have gone. Like I said before, it's kind of about maximizing your accidents and utilizing them as much as possible. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Who really cares though? None of this is meant to last forever. Mo monuments and statues are just graveyards. Same with museums. You can tell I've been reading way too much Robert Smithson lately. Yeah, and I 
I think this is the one where I screw up. You can see it. Check it out when I do Chico's tail. Yeah, it kind of goes all over the place. It's like, what is that? That would be called drawing under the influence. <laughs> Thank God they haven't made that illegal yet. Give them time. They will. I was talking to my new doctor about the cultural differences in drinking. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. And I believe we are closing out. Love you all. Thank you very much once again. You have a beautiful week. And we will see you next week. Take care.